Scream Queens Season 2, Episode 7, Thoughts. This episode is called The Hand. So, spoilers for this episode, as well as the ones leading up to it. Another episode I absolutely love. Before I dig in, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the Sec After Strikers. I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So, yeah, um... Uh, I've probably, I'm pretty sure I've said on camera before, I love Evil Dead 2. Obviously, one of the funniest parts of that, of elements of that movie is the, the hand, the possessed hand. And yeah, I'm pretty sure the, the you know, Ren Murphy, Brad Feldshuk, and Ian Brennan, who wrote this episode, also love that. Yeah, um... It was a very fun, because cause that is like, you know, in Evil Dead 2, the hand uses what it has at its disposal to, to fight. Here, you know, you add to that that it can turn on the TV, it's wake him up in the middle of the night with, you know, televangelism. That's, yeah. And I appreciate, like, there really are some intense stress sources at, at this hospital, you know, he's walking down the, the corridor and, you know, okay, so, um, Kathy Munch is asking you to, to go to her office. She won't say why. Cassidy really needs you. He can, there's a joke you told. He remembers the punchline, but not the setup. Can you help with that? And, you know, I, I crap, I don't even remember what the third one was, but there was at least one more. And, you know, and and he gets very very tense, and so he's apparently like uh, uh, choking a guy, and and you know number number five, well, yeah num number five takes it exceptionally well, just like uh, Doctor Brock, you know, and just uh, sorry. I really love the the fact that they gave the hand a voice. Um, it sounded like it might just be. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% certain, but yeah, the the it sounded like it was just. Um, I have it momentarily. John Stamos himself doing the the voice. I'm not seeing anyone credited as just the the voice of the hand so um oh right and it's, yeah in her dead or alive game Chanel number three shows Cassidy photos of Bob Barker Dick Van Dyke and the band Creed all of whom were actually alive yeah um and the the salt where you know he's reading okay so how much is a pinch of salt and the the hand is just taking okay that's a pinch, and that's a pinch, and that's, and, you know, eventually just grabbing the entire container and emptying, and, and Chanel takes it remarkably well. We know she's, like, a perfectionist, and that much salt, holy crap. And and he's, like, trying to play cool, like, oh, it's not, it's not salty, it's just, uh, and, yeah, the, the, is your hand duct tape to your leg? Yes, it is. And it's like struggling to get free and, you know, and, and actually attacks her and she breaks up, you know, saying, I get enough of people trying to murder me at work. It's the last thing I want, you know, as if it's like, you know, because that is the thing, you know, sometimes people break up around, sometimes it's very healthy. You know, I, I get this at work, I don't want to get it at home as well, but usually it's not serial killing. You know, that's a that's a very, very small percentage of the, the reasons for, for, yeah. And I love that, you know, she's like, I, you know, I don't even really know you. Like, how old are you? And then, how old are you? <laughs> she's kind of stuck on, on that. And we meet Anna Plaisance, who has two pairs of limbs, and he shakes... Two right hands of this, yeah, and and yeah, it turns out you know the, the you know yeah the surgery is possible, but it's only barely possible, you know, and 
as you know, Munch points out, you keep bragging about being the best surgeon in North America, you know, and yeah, like <laughs> that's the kind of thing that happens on this show as a result of that kind of behavior, you know, it's and and that is like from the moment we met him constantly he's name dropping Harvard he's talking about how incredible he is so yeah is you know and uh, Munch also calls this guy from the press Slade Hornborn and yeah just to, just to make it as as much pressure as at all possible and yeah, the, you know, really enjoyed the the montage of Cassidy training to push it to the limit, and <laughs> number three says, you know, I, I really have to cure this thing about how you believe that you're actually dead. You know, what what am I gonna do? Raise little half dead, half alive children? You know, and and he's like, I didn't know you were so prejudiced about people who are dead, and she's like, everyone is, I'm just the only one brave enough to admit it. Fair enough. I, I try not to hold prejudice. I try to examine my biases. I do believe I am probably prejudiced against dating the dead. That is f fair enough. You know, although dating the dead, I'm not a fan of reality television, but that is prop. although I guess that is also, I guess that is already what is happening in, in that one bit of Shaun of the Dead, isn't it? But a, a zombie dating show would be... It would kill in the ratings, is all I'm saying. And I love that, you know, okay, so there's, you know, the DSM doesn't actually recognize this disorder, so I had to make my own test. And I, you know, cross-referenced between a different a bunch of different ones, including Cosmo, and... Yeah, I think I can be... I, I think I may have did deduced a couple of Cosmo based questions and I love that you know one of the results is your your spirit celebrity is Scarjo how how many times during the day do you think about death and murder 37 wow oh is that high um n not that much I guess <laughs> yeah that's um that's putting your foot in it that's that's not the best answer if you're not trying to get caught as a serial killer, and he asks, you know, he, he's asked what what's his favorite Madonna, and gives the the exact right answer. And they insist on watching him give the urine sample, you know, just to make sure that he's not going to swap it out with somebody else's urine. <laughs> and let's see. Yeah, and, and they explain, you know, oh, it is psychological. The reason why you're cold all the time is you sleep on a waterbed near an AC. I, I really, really love on this show when, like, a big mystery will have, like, the most obvious answer in the world. And... Yeah, you know, uh, it turns out number three did not give him all the, the answers... So she and number five are now aware that he is a psycho whose profession is most likely serial killer. That wasn't a Cosmo quiz. Okay, fair enough. I guess they're they're more morbid than I had heard. That's because uh, that's like you know the the kind of guessing someone's profession. That's not from like a, a psychiatric test. That's. And let's see. Yeah, and and Dr. Brock attempts to cut off the hand but struggles. And then the hand easily defeats Green Meanie, which I mean, yeah, um I guess if you you know, in, in a universe where serial killing is this kind of you know, very much like slasher based kind of yeah, I I guess someone who's you know the the um, this this you know one of the one of the top serial killers would defeat someone with less experience and yeah the person he's fighting is either Cassidy or 
Ingrid, you know, so, yeah. Let's see. And I like that Chanel number three to, can't talk about these things to anyone alive, so she's sharing with the corpse. <laughs> and she admits, you know, oh, I mean, I guess from, you know, from a Malthusian perspective, he is just thinning out the herd. And, and she thinks that it's acne that Thomas is dealing with and points out, you know, I mean, the, you know, there's that one actor who's, you know, that's, that's acne. I think it gets him more work than if he didn't have it. And, right, and, and Chanel, you know, talks to number three and number five. And, you know, for her, it's like old news that... Yeah, okay, so, my boyfriend does have the hand of a deceased serial killer. He keeps trying to kill people, you know, whatever. That is that is so yesterday's news. This is not something, you know, you know, but, you know, he said he would make it his top priority not to murder me. <laughs> and, and, you know... Number five is like, no, this is not okay. Like, this is, he's still probably gonna try to kill you. And number, and, and Chanel is like, you're just saying that because you never had a boyfriend. What are you, yeah, I did. Tyler, he was murdered three weeks ago. And number three is like, you know, so many weird things happened. I actually forgot about that. And, yeah, and, and Ingrid asks Cassidy, you know, get me Dr. Brock's path, password. Which one? It doesn't matter. Most Americans use the same password each place. And that's, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is, there's, I don't know the numbers, but I can imagine there's some, there's, that's very likely true. And apparently his password is, I went to Harvard, all caps, which, yeah, I 100% believe that. If you had asked me, I would probably have guessed um, right, I love that Ingrid hates number three's earmuffs. It's not even cold out. And, yeah, and, and we see Brock even more stressed, and, you know, he's trying to... Yes, I would like to cancel, cancel my subscription. Don't, no, don't put me in a hole! Which is the, you know, yeah. That's that's what happens when you try to cancel your subscription. They put you on hold for forever, and you know the the the, the pop up ads for male enhancement, and then the you know Hornborn shows up, and he has to to close the the laptop, and you know <laughs> and he he slaps Slade across the face. What was that? That was the way we greet people who we really respect. And and you know, Munch is like, it's true. It's it's Bolt you know, it's a Baltimore tradition. So now that everybody's now that the introductions are out of the way. <laughs> so yeah, they're really not letting the the thing with, with Baltimore go, and I really respect that. I don't think it should be. And, yeah, so the, you know, her, Anna's heart wouldn't be able to, to survive the procedure. Oh, the, we'll just do a transplant, you know, because that's how, you know, difficult surgical procedures are. It's like a video game. You just add on top and, and mix and match the right, and then it's going to be, you know, just as if... Not each of these things is is like a massive undertaking, but yeah, you know we know Kathy loves good press. She loves dealing with, you know, she's she's an expert at dealing with the press. Your boyfriend is being poisoned by the Russians. I don't know any Russians. Yeah, you didn't. And this Ukrainian former leader didn't? <laughs> I appreciate the enthusiasm, Kazzy. I really do. But I think you might be barking up the wrong tree. I don't think this is the Russians. 
And I, I love that number three, her ears are already covered inside the suit, but she still put the muffs on top of the suit. Let's see, and yeah, and they, they, you know, they both have something to confess to the other. So, you know, let's go at the same time. And, you know, both of them, you know, she confesses that she knows about that, that he's Green Meanie. He confesses that he is Green Meanie. Uh, you know, they both say, I love you. And, you know, wait, what was that? I said, I love you. Oh, I heard that. That was very nice. But did you say you're going to kill Chanel? You know, it's just, um, I said, could you, could you not kill Chanel number one? I don't know. This feels very controlling. <laughs> Oh my god, that really, that is such a solid parody of, it's, it's like, you know, they've, they've done it with, with Chad Radwell as well, but just such a great parody of how, like, insecure, often it's men, but it's not exclusively men, you know, using these, like, um, like self-help and and psychological you know buzzwords that that in on the right circumstances that's extremely like there sometimes you are dealing with a controlling partner but your partner telling you please don't kill my best friend that's not controlling that's extremely reasonable let's see and and the the let's see Right, and the thing with, um, yeah, the, the, oh, that's, that's very tidy. Are there any sex toys in the, the thing, you know, because I really don't trust anyone who doesn't have at least one sex toy in here. Nice guy chemicals. I mean, with a name like that, I really get the sense that they're completely ethical and not destroying the planet. I, I'm not sure there is a nice guy chemicals in real life, but that there are definitely companies that, tr like, yeah, have a name that's based on trying to distract from the, yeah. And, yeah, the, you know, they think that Shelley must be poisoning Thomas because of Munchausen by proxy, which is a real thing yeah and and like there's a there's uh, I forget what the what it's called but there's a really well-known ah crap what's his name again um, I'll, I'll have it momentarily um, Daniel Day Lewis there's a there's a movie that he's in that where where someone is poisoning their partner to I'm almost 100% certain it's him because of like you know that way they'll you know they can keep taking care of their partner and then we learn no Thomas has been poisoning himself because he thought that would make her leave and that's such a great, because it really is, like, dude, just, like, break up with her. There's a million, just, there's so many things that, that you, you don't have to poison yourself. But there's so many guys out there who literally would rather, like, do something dangerous to themselves than just look her in the eye and say, I'm sorry, this isn't working out for me. Like, it's not... Oh my god. That is that is very, very, like, it is sadly very accurate. And then we learn, you know, oh, you're just you're too tidy. You won't, she won't even let me keep a sex toy in the day, you know. I just don't trust people to live. <laughs> and let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, the, the, um, number three and, and Cassidy are like, you know, yeah, number three is like, I mean, I thought it was true love, but now I just don't know, because, the you know, maybe I'll have to turn you in. And he threatens her, and it's like, yeah, that's, you're really, talk about proving the point. Holy crap. Let's see, and, and, 
Brock, you know, walks, opens the door, walks in, you know, covered in, in blood and with the, the surgical stuff. And, and Kathy's like, okay, I got a couple questions. She's taking it extremely well. It's not like, oh my god, whose blood is that? It's just like, is that the blood of a murder victim? Okay. Is it the blood of the, the patient that you're supposed to be doing surgery on? You know, it's just, <laughs> you know. And, yeah, we, we find out, you know, yeah, Kathy is doing this to, to get back at him. You know, if you were screwing me, then this wouldn't be an issue. Since you're not screwing me, I am screwing you. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and now the in order yeah and he's like I'm such a great surgeon I can do this with my arm behind with one arm tied behind my back in fact that's what I'm gonna do I really appreciate how he keeps upgrading the way he ties his hand over the the course of the episode and yeah here at the end for a while it actually really you know and yeah actually yeah it keeps working for at least slightly longer as well you know so starts with duct tape then the the handcuff chain thing which ultimately it that one doesn't really fail but it's also not a great solution for the current predicament and then finally these you know belt leather straps kind of thing and <laughs> why is he doing this with one hand well one hand tied by his back for dramatic effect. Maybe you should shut your pie hole. Herb, pie hole. And, yeah, for a while it works, but then there's, you know, okay, within three minutes, this heart is going to die, so. And, you know, then, and, and Chanel is like, there, there's, you know, the solution here is for you to share with me. You know, what is something from your, your childhood what was something that would, you know, help relax you? And it's great because this is the kind of thing, like, you know, he didn't think of, of him, you know, maybe I should ask her to, to, like, sing a song that would calm me down, but her, you know, a new set of eyes, you know, can, can really help solve the, the problem. I really love that this is, like, you know... It's the kind of stuff that you would find on, like, shows that played completely straight. Like, you know, you have number three and Cassidy are like, you know, maybe we're in love, but I just don't know. There's this one thing that's really bugging me. And then, you know, because they're in a hospital, they're, they're working in a hospital, the patients, they sure seem in love. Ah, oh, the love wasn't quite as strong. I just don't know, you know, kind of thing. And with, with number one and, and Dr. Brock... It's this thing of, you know, the, you, you know, you have to open up to me. It's, you know, it can save the relationship. And then by the end, it's like, it could save this person's life. You know, just because, because these are things like in real life, if you are, you know, if you think you, you maybe love someone, but you're not sure if a relationship with them would work, you know, it's in real life, you're not necessarily going to look at like people near you but it's it works well for like television and this thing of you know yeah some people do really struggle to open up to to their partner even though it is extremely important for a healthy relationship and yeah he explains you know oh you know when i when i was you know i my my old pair would sometimes sing to me to to relax me well, what did she sing 99 red uh, balloons that song is from 1983. You would have been 20. Why did you still have an all pair? You know, it is like, yeah, that really. It, and yeah, you know the the Chanel's sing 99 red balloons, and then the the maybe original, maybe cover. I wasn't the original in German. Did the original singer also record an American version? Anyway, but you know the the. It sounded like the real deal plays over, and it actually works. It gets him to relax, and they do manage to, to save the the heart. And I, I love that there's this brief bit where it's like, 
EKG flatlining, I guess this is it, and then it you know pops back, and then in comes the the you know the the music yeah comes back in and just yeah and and then we see that you know Cassidy and number three you know the fact that they loved each other so much you know Thomas and and Shelley that does give her the the hope Let's see. and yeah and the the thing with you know okay so the the um, I I promise I'm not gonna kill Chanel, but I can't promise nobody else will. Thank you. What? <laughs> and and you know, I I can't tell you who the killer is. And yeah, so Slade is gonna whistle blow. I I, I love that one of the things you know. Kathy Munch keeps claiming she's a doctor. You know, just I have seen more ethics violations. In the last was it, in the last three days than in my entire career up to this point. <laughs> Jesus. And yeah, the the hand of Anna is going. You know, um, Cassidy says he's going to to replace Brolt's, you know, serial killer hand. And I really love the way the camera goes in on the hand in the in the thing, and then it like transitions into the shot of of him at night, and then it like writes you know the 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 fact that he still intends to to kill Janelle. So does that mean that the new hand is still homicidal, or is this like the last thing? Because the, there was like uh, uh, gauze around some of the, the hand, suggesting that there's been a cut. Yeah, um, but yeah, really, really excellent episode. Um, yeah, I I really appreciate that they actually dedicated, you know. The, the entire um, it's it's like it's the a plot of the episode is all about the the hand you know being being pushed and and him trying desperately to to restrain it and yeah um, I don't know if any music was released along with the show in order to like promote it and such if they did not do you know if, if they didn't release as a song the three Chanel singing 99 red Luft balloons I feel like that's a uh, uh, missed opportunity because I could check real quick let's see if we say screen Queens 99 red balloons um It does not look like there's one specific for the, um, but yeah, the, the, yeah, uh, that is everything about this episode. Yeah, so let's see, that was episode seven, so there's what, it leaves eight, nine, and ten. Three more episodes. And yeah. Um I think that is everything. So right, right. The the fact that you know it's basically a cause for celebration. The serial killer actually didn't kill this person. You know, even the Florida Republicans would pull the plug. And yeah, that is it for this one. So yeah, sometime next week I will do the the next episode. And until then, please keep your murderous hand safely fastened. Keep screaming, Queens.